Last month, Unity held their annual Unite conference in Amsterdam. Myself and a number of creators from the Insider program were invited out to Amsterdam by Unity. So let's talk about it. Shortly after my video discussing the whole pricing debacle, Unity's former CEO John Riccatello stepped down and was replaced by interim CEO James Whitehurst. As far as I can tell, James is a very different kind of CEO. At the welcome party, James was wandering around, introducing himself and chatting to all of the attendees. He was trying to get a gauge on the overall feeling of things. I chatted to him for about 10 to 15 minutes, and in the short time we spent chatting, I genuinely got the impression from him that he understood the currently poor optics around Unity, and that he cared about how much of Unity's reputation was built on its community. This is something he even touched on during his keynote speech. The Linux open source community and the Unity community do have a lot in common. At Red Hat, we talked about democratizing information and content. At Unity, we talked about democratizing game development. And I'm here because I am so excited to and inspired by the opportunity to lead an organization that's truly mission-driven and an organization that its boundaries really go well beyond the actual boundaries of the corporation, right? It includes a passionate community of contributors. And to me, that is so inspiring. And so I'm so happy to be with you here. Now, obviously these are just words and actions are far more important, but I think it's worth pointing out that this kind of direct communication and listening would not have been the case with JR. John Riccatello would rarely be seen mingling among everyday users at an event like this, and would instead require very pre-planned question and answer sessions with pre-approved individuals. So my impression from most of the Unity staff that I spoke to is that they noticed a very different demeanor from James and that they're welcoming him as the right leader for the company given its current state. And so what about the conference itself? Well, for me, there are a couple of big announcements coming out of Unite and one small one that piqued my interest. But I just want to nitpick for a second because I think it's absurd that half of the runtime of Unity's keynote was focused on AI. Credit where it's due, I think the one feature that is going to be generally quite useful is MuseChat. This is their chat GPT alternative, and as it's trained on Unity's source code, it could be an extremely useful tool in understanding how the engine works and act as a huge time saver when trying to find documentation for something. The other tools I'm not super stoked about. I think generative AI, much like NFTs, are something of a joke, full of investor tech bro buzzwords that mean nothing, but Unity seem keen on doubling down. And so fine, if you want to use stuff like this for prototyping, then whatever. But given how much of a gray area all of this currently is, I do not see a world where any of these tools are used in full-fledged production. Coming out on stage saying you're willing to defend your users in court is not the slam dunk you think it is, Unity. It's a huge red flag. Like I said, I think it's fine for prototyping or hobbyists or small projects that aren't going to be commercially available, but seeing as this isn't going to be a free product or even included with a pro license in the first place, and that it's an entirely separate subscription, I just don't really see who this is for. And I'm mostly disappointed because I think there's a world where AI-assisted tooling generally helps us make better video games. It's just that generative AI isn't it. And I think it's kind of disappointing that Unity aren't exploring avenues of AI tooling that will actually make the boring and tedious parts of development easier. So yeah, I'm not stoked on the AI stuff. The first half of their keynote though, was chocked full of cool announcements. Most notably the shift to Unity 6. Yes, they're dropping the weird backdated yearly versioning system and going back to a single version number. This is for all intents and purposes, probably just a marketing move more than anything, but seeing as the move to the yearly versioning system kind of backfired straight out of the gate as they were regularly late on delivery. And in general, that number scheme is wildly confusing to users. I see this move back to Unity 6 as a smart one, and hopefully it means that they can push more incremental updates through the lifetime of the LTS. Secondly then, there are a ton of announcements around optimizations to the universal render pipeline and high definition render pipeline. I won't go too much into it here, but it seems like they're going to be pushing a bunch of workloads onto the GPU, and in general, handling rendering in a much more performant way. I'm developing cabs of chaos in URP, so I'm curious to see what effects these improvements may have. Finally, I was at a talk regarding changes to UI Toolkit. This is something I haven't really covered on the channel yet, but I've actually been using Editor UITK for a few years now, alongside the GraphView API for a bunch of node-based editing tools I've built on a number of different projects. And for a long time, the runtime version of UI Toolkit was not really very ready. So I had been holding off playing around with it. But now that I'm much more familiar with UI Toolkit, this has piqued my interest because it looks like a lot of the upcoming changes to the UI Toolkit API have cleared up some of the issues I had with using it as a runtime system. Essentially, they're streamlining the way that generating visual elements work, and they're massively improving the binding workflow to be able to sync up with your serialized data, and in general, just making the whole system much easier and more intuitive to work with. 
I've wanted to cover UA Toolkit here on the channel for a while, but it's been kind of a huge topic, so I've been unsure on where to start. However, these new changes mean that I'll likely come up with something in the new year to get people introduced and working with it. So for me then, the greatest part of this event was actually getting to hang out with all of the other creators. It was my favorite part of GDC and is one of the best aspects of doing these videos and going to events like this. There are a lot of awesome creators making excellent content and so it's always great to hang out with them, talk about the things we're making and share knowledge and ideas with one another. I'll leave links below to all of the insiders you're seeing in this video and so please do go support them because they're making great stuff. Speaking of which, Blackthorn Productions were also at Unite and they've given me a discount code for anyone interested in their Game Dev Rocket course. This is a huge course with over 60 hours of content available to watch that will teach you how to make a game from start to finish, including 2D games, 3D games, art production, mobile development, multiplayer development, and publishing pipelines. So if it's something you're interested in, they've hooked me up with a 30% discount for you to use if you use the coupon code MAT30 at checkout. So head over to www.gamedevrocket.com and use the coupon code MAT30 to get 30% off the course price. I'll have a link available in the description below. Okay, so those were some of my biggest takeaways from Unite. All in all, I'd say I'm cautiously optimistic. The upcoming improvements coming in Unity 6 generally seem like a step in the right direction. The new CEO seems to be saying all of the right things, and my general impressions are that he genuinely cares about the community aspect of the company, and I think we'll see them making moves to streamline their focus. I'm hopeful that with the move to the single numbered version again, that we'll get a more unified product in the future. And so what's next? Well, the runtime fee is still looming and I stand by what I said in my previous video. However, over on Patreon, I posted about some of the experiments I was making with the Unreal Engine and how I was using Cabs of Chaos as a template in learning the engine. And while there are a lot of things that I love about it, there are also a lot of things that I don't. The C++ experience makes it very, very hard to enjoy working with in comparison to C Sharp. If you need a series of third-party tools on top of your IDE just to be able to code your video game, something is seriously, seriously wrong there. So I've come to the conclusion that trying to port the game over to Unreal is not something I'm interested in pursuing any further. And to be direct, I feel as though I've been distracted and unfocused these past few months. In the limited time I have between my day job and these videos, I really just want to get back to making the game and having fun in my downtime. As I said in my initial announcement video, a lot of the game is already in place and so I really just want to make more progress on it over the next few months. So I think it's just going to be best for me to finish the game in Unity. Hopefully I'll have an update on the game here shortly. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts on some of the announcements from Unite in the comments down below. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you again next time.